We're going to take the derivative of this function. Basically, what we want to do is we want to get used to applying our new power rule. So as we take the derivative, since the function is defined as y equals, we can write y prime equals. We can write dy over dx. Either way. But we got to note that we're taking the derivative here. Going term by term, applying the power rule. If you start with dx to the eighth, according to the power rule, you take the power of eight, you bring it down, keep our variable of x, subtract one away from the power. Eight x to the seventh would be the derivative of x to the eighth. We add the derivative of 12x to the fifth. We're going to bring 5 down because that's the power. Now, in front we have a 12. So what happens is that 5 gets multiplied to that 12, and we get 60 back. x to a power of 1 less, which is 4, minus. All right, derivative for minus 4x to the fourth. We're bringing 4 down to the front. There's a 4 there, so we're multiplying to get 16. We've got x to the 1 less power, which is power of 3 now. Plus, for the 10x cubed, bring the 3 down, multiply to 10, get 30. x to a power of 2. And then that minus 3 is a constant derivative of a constant is zero. So that term just kind of drops out, and there's your derivative. All right, for this next function as it's defined, there's really a couple ways we could do this, but to get used to these rules, I want to use the product rule. Um, taking my derivative, since it's defined as y equals, let's use either y prime or dy dx. Just for some variety here, I'll use dy dx. We have a function here multiplied to a function here. So going back to how our rule is stated, the product rule, we've got g of x times h of x, right? If we're going to take that derivative, we're going to follow this formation down here. So if it helps to label, you come back here and say, OK, this is g of x, this is h of x. That'll help me follow my new rule. So as we start with the product rule, we're taking the derivative of this first function. Taking the derivative of this first function, you've got a 6x cubed as a term, which means you have to use a power rule, right? So bring your 3 down, multiply to 6, get 18. You've got x to a new power of 2, because you have to subtract 1 away from the power. Adding 2, this is a constant where if you take the derivative, you get 0, right? So what I have right here, that's the derivative of that first part. That's the g prime of x. As you continue with the rule, the next part was h of x, right? So it was just the second function, 7x to the fourth, plus well, as the rule continues, you have g of x, which is just the first function. So the first function unchanged is 6x cubed plus 2. And then it concludes with h prime of x, right? So the derivative of the second function, you take the derivative here using your power rule, bring the 4 down, multiply to 7, you've got 28. x, subtract 1 from the power, power now is 3. If we leave this in an unsimplified form, which for the time being we will do because we're just getting used to this rule. That's my answer. That's my derivative right there. Okay, so we got a rational function. That means we got a quotient rule we're going to apply. Um, since this is defined as h of t, I'm going to write h prime of t. Can't do y prime, can't do dy dx. h prime of t is going to equal, if I apply my quotient rule, now let's go back to the rules again. For the quotient rule, you've got your g of x over your h of x. So we're going to follow this form right here. If you want to label, 
g of x would be up here, h of x would be down here. So according to the quotient rule, we're going to get a great big quotient. And to start, we're going to take the derivative of this numerator expression. So derivative would be, following your power rule, bring the 2 down. So it's 2t to the first power, if you subtract 1, plus, OK, this one's kind of interesting because we haven't encountered it yet. If this is t to the first power, basically what happens here is that t just drops off. I mean, think about it. If you bring this 1 down, you're going to multiply the 1 in front, you're going to get 1. You subtract 1 away from the power, you get 0, right? So t to the 0 becomes 1. That idea that gets multiplied just kind of cancels itself out, right? So anytime you see a t to the first, an x to the first, whatever, when you're taking the derivative, just understand that drops. The coefficient is what's left. So 2t plus 1 so far. If you got a minus 2 here, that's a constant, so we know that goes to 0. 2t plus 1 is the derivative of the top part. As the quotient rule continues, you tack on h of x, so that's the bottom part, unchanged, minus the top part, because it's g of x, right? So t squared plus t minus 2. And then we conclude with this numerator portion. We conclude with the derivative of the denominator. You've got t cubed, so bring down the 3. It's now going to be t squared. Got that constant of 6, which goes to 0. So 3t squared is the derivative of the bottom. Finishing up the rule, you take h of x, which is t cubed plus 6, and you raise that to a power of 2. That concludes your rule, right? And just like we did with the product rule, we're just in the stages right now where we're getting used to these ideas, how to apply these rules. We're going to leave that in an unsimplified form. All right, so you got a tangent line that, according to this problem, should be passing through the function, right? It's passing through the function at this point, 2, 11. If we want to find the equation of the tangent line, Put it in point slope form. What we know, well, we know the point, so we could start by writing y minus 11, the y value at that point, equals the slope we need to find times x minus 2, because that's the x value at the point. Now, if we're going to find the slope, let's do that over here. Well, what am I going to do to find the slope? When in doubt, from this point forward in the course, every time we have a problem like this where we get stuck, but we have a function that's given, what are we going to do? Derivative. There it is. Derivative. We're going to take the derivative. We want to take the derivative here because the derivative gives us a formula for finding slopes of tangent lines. So f prime of x, if I go to f of x up here, work through my terms, you've got x to the fourth. So you're going to bring down the 4, you've got x cubed when you take the derivative there. Minus, bring down the 3 on the x cubed, you've got 3x squared. Plus, on the x squared, bring down 2, it's going to be 2x now to the first. Minus x, what's that become? Minus 1. It's x to the first, so you just keep the coefficient, right? Drop the x. This 1 goes to 0 because it's a constant. This is our derivative, which is a formula for finding the slope of a tangent line. That means I could say that m equals, using f prime as my formula, 4 times what cubed? What's the x value at the point? 2. So it's going to be 2 cubed. Minus 3 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 1. So take what x is at the point, 
plug it into your derivative and find the slope. We calculate that all out. We should get 23, I believe. And if we get 23, we can insert that in over here to our equation. And now we found the equation of the tangent line. 